The Happy Minecrafter, a guide to sustainable living in your own backyard in Minecraft. Hosted by JDMac020. Created and developed by Jonathan MacGregor. And now, let's go to the show. Oh, hello there, happy watchers. We're back here once again on the estate, and we're going to finish our redstone project. We're going to get everything lit up and show you how to make sure everything's properly circuited because redstone is one of the trickier things in Minecraft nature. There's a reason you don't necessarily see it all the time. It can be a pain in the patootie. And so we wanted to say hello to one of our, our iron golems and he's watching me and that that's a little unsettling but we we are in tune so we're gonna go ahead and get started and show you how everything works with our daylight sensor powered little light system and so what we've done here watchers is I've gone ahead and dug out and wired one half of the smithy at this point point um, as you see we have our oh no go away I'm fire ah it's the middle of the day see this is the problem with forest watchers it's dark enough oh and there's a skeleton with leather armor hold that thought watchers the forest is dark enough to hide your average monster from the sun so you need to be very careful and not do anything crazy like turn your back on a forest now as I was saying before we were so rudely interrupted we've gone ahead and wired one half of this the daylight sensor is up it is running you can see it is powering all the way down for our it's actually four lights if you remember correctly watchers we have one two three exterior lights on this side of our blacksmith shop and then there's one in the corner there where there's no fire providing illumination so we've got four lights being powered um, not exactly by the daylight sensor we can pretend and say the solar panel is charging batteries and that'll kick on at night but the way this actually works watchers is the redstone is currently being charged this redstone dust is being charged by this daylight sensor and as it comes down it drops a lower to a lower level and it hits this block and it charges this block a redstone torch when it is sitting on top of a powered block shuts off energy plus energy creates nothing positive plus a positive is a negative so that's what's going on here the daylight sensor overwhelms our torch during the day you can see the power is getting a little bit weak down here but it will still excuse me, still do the job. As it gets darker, as the sun sets, and we can watch this here in a moment, there will be less energy coming to the daylight sensor, and these will turn themselves on. Now, depending on how picky we want to be, we can set up repeaters and manage to have them all shut off at the same time. There may be a slight delay because of the distance that this power has to travel. So let's go ahead and watch this. So as you can see here watchers we've got the Sun going down and already two of these are on. One of these is still working and the interior light still not on yet because the power from our daylight sensor is still strong enough. Oop, it just kicked off you can see strong enough to come down here now everything is lit just before dusk 
And we're pretty happy about that here because that's what we need. It's still mostly light. I'm not exactly worried about everything being in sync. Uh, we might do that later. But right now, just having a functioning system that's lit up when it's dark is the goal. So let me show you how to actually set this up. All right then, watchers. What we're going to do is basically just create a mirror image here. So how we figured this out was your lighting comes first. We knew we wanted these two lights and this light. So we knew we had to find a way to power them. So that means breaking out our shovel. And the best way, we're going to have to dig this down, power this block. So we've got the block under here. We're going to go ahead and pull these tools down here. We're going to put a redstone torch under. Perfect. And we're also going to go to the next set of lights. Make sure there's a torch under that light as well. And one more time. Are you keeping up now, watchers? There we go. So now they are lit. Mission accomplished. Except that lit all the time is not exactly the most efficient way to go about things. It's not very conservation minded. So we need to figure out a way to uh, shut them down in the daytime when we don't need the light. Make sure we're conserving our energy. So we're using that daylight sensor and we're just going to do a little bit of aesthetics here. We're going to dig out this dirt and uh, make sure we grab that dirt. We're going to dig this out. We're going to have the, the sensor extend out into this platform a little bit. And that's good, that's good. And then it's going to come from here, make sure it's powered. And we're going to have to follow this. I believe we need to go out one. Because we can't run directly next to, yes, that's something that's tricky. In order to power this block, we have to go out and in. We have to swing wide and go into it like a T connection. We can't just run along it and power it. That will not work for some reason. I thought I heard growling. So we're going to have to come out one. And we're going to have to imagine how the redstone dust is going to go. And we're going to excavate this one. And we're going to dig out here. And it's going to come down to here. We'll go in and shut that. And we're going to continue along. And that'll be fine. Oh, we're going to come down and in. Perfect, perfect. And we got to do this again. And we're going to come down one more time. And this should work. This should work, watchers. Let's go ahead and... Oh, I didn't go down far enough. We have to go down not to the torch, but to the block. Remember that. If we go into the torch, the torch is going to be more powerful and overwhelm the signal from the dust. So we need to power this block. Because as you see, the power is going not into the dust. It's above here. So that's how we work around it. Going along. Nope, I did the same thing here. Ridiculous, watchers. Ridiculous. So we're going to come down one here, and then here. The whole thing is just full of shenanigans. This is why redstone is tricky. It is not as intuitive as the rest of Minecraft. The rest of Minecraft, if we did, is it's just you place blocks in here you place blocks differently than you would otherwise. So if this worked, and it did, see the power from the 
sensor follows the dust, pops in here, powers the block, shuts off the redstone torch. And this worked in all three cases. That is how you do it. Now, watchers, there is a school of thought that this redstone circuitry is kind of ugly. It's just not very pleasing. If we come down here, we can't really see it, but it's there. And if you come around the corner, it's like, oh, goodness, what is going on here? It's not very pretty. It's not very in tune with Minecraft. So we are going to uh, do our best to block this up. Now we have to be careful because we can't just cut block it like so. We can't just play something over. Um, it's just not going to work like that. And if we do that, we just cut off the redstone. So we need to be very careful how we go through and hide our work. So the easiest thing is to just kind of fill in everywhere we know is safe to fill in and see how far that gets us. Some of these we don't necessarily want to cover. We want to see some of this. The wall, after all. See if there is no very minimalist. We want to make sure we're not we may need to cover that anyway. The less we have to impact things, the better. And there we are so far. So good. Now the easiest way to do this would be just to uh, like so, just build everything up a level. Can't do that, remember. This should be okay. Uh, I think here as well we can cover... Can't go there. And here we are. It's not terribly pretty. But it should do the trick. And at this point, watchers, you're going to need to decide for yourself what is too ugly in your design. Because uh, I'm not thrilled with how this looks. Um, it cuts off my, my stone brick. It's kind of, this is not a natural, I guess I can get rid of that. But you see, I can't do this here very well. It just, just I'm, I'm not feeling how this looks right now, watchers. And when we get to the top, down here I think it's a, a necessary evil because I can't really have the circuitry just exposed to the air where I'm going to be coming in and out every day. I may work with this a little bit later, but up here, this, this is just madness. I don't think there's value, significant value added in covering the top part of the circuitry. It's just too much. There's also the added problem of blocking the sunlight. Already, the sun is blocked by this tree. If we build up this mound of dirt, it's just not not going to do good things for us watchers. So uh, rather than cover everything, I think this is discreet enough that we don't need to worry about it. And so I am going to go to bed to get some daylight, and then we're going to speed run through covering up the other side. How do you like them apples?
and again as you see the uh, about the same point on this side I've determined it's just not worthwhile to uh, bury the circuitry it's pretty covered enough it's below ground um, down here I'm not really feeling how this is coming all the way back out to my path so we're messing with things that have been in place for a while but at the end of the day lighting is so important in Minecraft everyone at home is going to be aware of that and that's really really the key element here so we um, I think we're done here we are finally finally complete with our blacksmith shop watchers we've added a very useful place to the estate and we've done it in a way that looks a little ugly I'm not going to lie I'm still not thrilled with how this looks here but sometimes you can't always have what you want and so there we have it watchers I hope that you learned something through this experience of building a blacksmith shop we touched on some redstone and the importance of lighting and how to move lava and safely contain it and lighting netherrack on fire and all sorts of fun details that hopefully you hadn't experienced before. But be that as it may, it has come to a close. Now next week, next week I don't know. Let's think about that. Maybe some sustainable adventuring. Maybe some caving. How to do that in a safe and in tune with Minecraft way. That could be pretty good indeed. So until next time, happy watchers. Keep on happy Minecrafting. This show was brought to you by Mojang, Windows Expressions Encoder, Open Broadcaster Software, Windows Movie Maker, and by watchers like you. Weapons are prohibited in prison. That shouldn't be a surprise to anybody in the viewing audience today. Um, no killing guards, obviously. Um, failure to do so will result in jail and death. <laughs>